technology, sports, music, fashion. Pacific Beach Street. We have got such a visual symphony for you. That's right. I check out what it takes to create our beautiful traditional Māori carving. I explore the colours and techniques of the samurai warrior. I check out the most beautiful instrument in the world. What? Me, my GHD? No, oh, you silly goose. I'm talking about harps, just like the angels. Speaking of angels, I visit the spinal unit and find out about all the amazing stuff that they do. But first up, you don't get more beautiful than a super yacht. Yeah. Technology. Building seafaring vessels is something people have been doing for as long as there's been water. But yachts like the one right here have taken the technology of design and sailing to places we never imagined. So what does it take to create something as sophisticated as this? We're off to Ella Yachts in Henderson to find out. Everybody, meet Warren Angland of Ella Yachts. Warren, what type of yachts does Ella Yachts build? Ella Yachts builds custom super yachts, mostly for international clients, so luxury private vessels. Now, I see you guys got all your international awards all around us. Yeah. What makes Ella Yachts one of the best? Oh, we're very innovative and we've got a very forward-thinking approach. Um, our engineering is very strong, so our design officers will do a lot of work that would otherwise, at other yards overseas, be subcontracted out. Cool. Well, can we go check out your design room? Sure. Let's go have a look. Let's go. We cover a lot of aspects of design here. We have the interior design on the other side of the wall here. And then in here, we'll have um, everything engineering related from the structure of the boat um, to actually the structure required to build the boat, right through to systems design. So here we're using the latest, um, very sophisticated 3D modelling software, enabling us to determine the shapes and sizes of the aluminium that needs to be cut to build the boat. So in this particular case, we've got some bow plating and an anchor mechanism. So you map out the whole boat on computer? Yes, we virtually build the boat in 3D now. Once you've got it there, what's the first physical step? OK, so once we've done this, we determine the shapes and sizes of the aluminium that we need to cut to build, and we send a file down to a machine on the floor which cuts out the aluminium for us. Can you check it out? Sure. All right, let's go. So this is the plasma cutter where all the aluminium is cut out. So the files that we do upstairs come down to the screen here, and then push go. This is some examples of some of the pieces that have come off the plasma cutter. Uh, you can see the plasma cutter marks on the plates also any reference lines to help us assemble the modules. Once we've got sufficient frames and tanks up in the air, we'll start plating it off and actually building the hull structure around the frames, or the hull plating. Once that gets to the point where we've got a whole boat, we've finished fabrication, then engineers will come in. They'll start putting some piping through the bilges and start plumbing out and getting systems ready. We can then put the flooring down inside and start lining the interior of the boat. This is the Mondango. Warren, how long has it taken for it to get to this point? It's taken just under two years to get to this point, with about a month left, or less than a month left in construction. And what we've got left to do is the uh, fit out of components that we've built off the boat. We've got to uh, finish the interior cabinetry, installation of furniture that we've built off the boat, painting, varnishing. Now, can you take me to where you guys do all your carpentry for the inside the furnishings? Yeah, of course. Let's have a look. It's real. The first thing I noticed, Warren, is that everything is wood. So what's this thing? Oh, this is a cabinet for a boat we're building at the moment. It's a good example of some nice timbers that we're working with. This is Macassar Ebony, which is very popular at the moment. All the spacings and everything have to be perfect. Can we go see one of your major custom components that you guys created? Sure. Let's go. So this is the Alloy Yacht winch. Yes, this is one of the Yellow Yachts custom vertical winches. The off-the-shelf winches that are available were no longer suitable for the loads and the, um, the size of the boats that we're building, so we've made our own custom range. So that have, would have had these on America's Cup, eh? <laughs> they do it slightly differently, they do it manually. See, where Rob Waddell and the other grinders are on the coffee grinders, I can do this with a push of a button. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, thank you very much, Warren, for showing us how you build your super yachts. If you guys want to know more, or interested maybe in having an apprenticeship here, do check out the website below. Do you reckon you could take me for maybe a little sale? Oh, we'll see what we can organise. All right, we'll see you later. See, my thing is, art comes from the heart. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Yeah, and obviously your heart is bloody blind as a bat. What do you know, Leonardo da Vinci? I'm going to a place where art has been celebrated, not mocked. 
When I went to school, I learned to add, subtract and chase the boys. But did you know there's a school where you can learn an ancient art form that reflects our shared culture and history as New Zealanders? It's the Māori Carving School here at Te Puya in Rotorua. Let's go and find out what they're doing to preserve our national treasure. Meet James Ricard. He is a master carver and the head of the carving school here at Te Puya. Tinakwe. Uh, tinakwe. Can you tell us why Māori carving is a treasure? It was never a treasure. Uh, it's become a treasure over time. But in the old days, it was just our form of writing, our form of recording whakapapa, history. How is Māori carving different to sculpture? We kind of get tied up with this art. It was never art. It was a written language. James, could you show me how you read a carving? Sure. All right. Uh, this carving is uh, Rehua. Rehua is the god of kindness. As you can see, each of these carvings has a cloak, and the cloak represents a large part of the story. Around his neck, he has a pare, and the pare represents the doorway that you have to go through to get into the uppermost heaven. The cloak itself has rows, how moths lay the eggs, and the moth is meant to represent the keeper of your soul. Can we go and see the school where they create these masterpieces? Yes, that's fine. Okay. James, how do you prepare a piece of raku? Step one, get a toki. A toki? What's a toki? A toki. A toki is this thing here. This is a traditional one. Um, Look at that. Pounami one. Uh, these days we have metal ones. But they all make different sounds. And what I like about uh, Fakairo is that you listen to all the sounds that each thing makes, yeah. each timber makes. Is that music? Music. Is there a, a point when you're teaching that you see that the students get what Fakairo is about? You kind of can uh, sense it when they, when they, it just clicks and you, you can tell in their eyes that they've understand what you're talking about. And so you don't have to explain a lot. You spend a, a lot of time explaining to them other things as opposed to explaining about carving, like how to behave when they go into a marae, how to behave as people. Don't go out and get hurrying drunk and expect the tribe to hand over their whakapapa. All of those sorts of things are part of a carver's makeup that they need to have. Because they seem to me to be holders of knowledge. Oh yes, it's an important role and they just, uh, when you say do they get it, when the penny drops and they understand that, that they are the holders of knowledge, then you've got a good carbon. Makes me feel pretty emotional being here because I think so much of our culture is lost and it seems to be found through this process. For you it's just um, um, knowing that it's safe I guess. Thank you so much, James. It's, it's been such a pleasure to be with you today. Such a privilege yeah. for me to be here with you today. If you want to know more about James and what he does, check out the website below. Kia ora. Ka kite. What is that? It's a work of art. If Corinne can decorate her room, I can decorate my room. What's it called? Ode to Balls. <laughs> More like ode to bollocks. Why don't you come up with something more like a for samurai theme? Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs>